In this video, I'm going to go over the limitations of this very small Harbor Freight drill press. It's limited in its uses because it's not a real precision drill press. And I'll get into the reasons why that is a little later in the video. I'm also going to go over some tools that you might need to help you with the assembly and adjustment process. And I'm going to go over some adjustments to make the drill press run a lot quieter and some tips just in general on the drill press. I'll tell you the reasons why I feel like this drill press isn't for everybody. I think it would be a good drill press for people who have a specific purpose in mind for a light duty drill press. What I'm using this drill press for is countersinking holes in plastic. So that's a pretty light duty task. The reasons why I feel like this drill press is better suited to somebody that has a specific need in mind or is just doing light duty work is because it lacks any rigidity in the table. If you put any downward pressure on the table it flexes so you're going to lose some accuracy in your holes that way there's also not any rigidity in the depth stop the plate that attaches to the spindle is made out of plastic once you've reached your depth you continue to put downward pressure that plate will actually flex and allow the depth to go deeper so you need to keep an eye on the stopper nuts and when they contact the stop you need to actually stop your drilling depth right there because if you continue to put pressure down it will flex and allow your depth to go deeper than what you intended it to. There's also some run out in the spindle. I didn't measure it. I can see it with my eye. So that tells me there's enough run out in the spindle that it's not going to be great for extremely precise stuff. But if what you need a drill press for is light duty, then this should work just fine for you. Here are some tools that you might find useful. The drill press comes with a chuck key and two Allen wrenches that are used in different size set screws on the drill press. The instructions don't really tell you what other tools you need. So if you're putting one of these together, you'll need two 14 millimeter wrenches, one to use to attach the base to the column. Most sockets aren't gonna fit in this area. So if you'll use a wrench, it'll help you out some there. And the reason I say you need two 14 millimeter wrenches is to use on your depth stop nuts. They're jam nuts, there's two of them. So you'll have to tighten them against each other in order Order to get your depth set on your depth stop. You might also want either a rubber mallet or a block of wood with a hammer to put the drill chuck in. As you've seen, the table flexes so much. If you follow the instructions in the book, it tells you to put a block of wood on the table and push the chuck into place that way. It's a friction fit. It's got a tapered fitting on the spindle that attaches to the chuck and it needs a little pressure on there to lock those in place. If you'll use either a block of wood and a hammer or a rubber mallet and run the jaws inside of the chuck so you don't mar the jaws and just give it a, a little tap there, it'll lock it in place and you don't have to take a chance on bending your table by using downward pressure in order to seat the chuck. And you also want a flathead screwdriver. A clamp's handy for removing Moving the tension on the belt and I'll show you how that works. Most of the videos I've seen on these particular drill presses, the drill press is always loud. It sounds almost like a diesel engine knocking or something. Drill presses can be loud. This one's abnormally loud. So let's take a look at how loud it is, the way they came set up from the factory, and I'll show you some adjustments to make it quieter. <laughs> You can really tell with the cover open that most of the noise is coming from this top end. One obvious problem is that the belt is rubbing against the wire clamp on the lowest speed setting. It can be a little tricky to release the pressure from the motor tensioner while you're trying to remove the belt. You can do this kind of hands-free by using a clamp to keep that tension relieved on the belt and it'll make it a little easier for you to get it off and on.
here you can see some dust that came off of the belt where it was rubbing kind of made a rubbery dust where it was rubbing on the wire clamp we need to adjust these pulleys up and one thing that's not obvious just initially is that these pulleys aren't actually tightened down very well on the spindles or the motor shaft itself and that's where a lot of that noise is coming from so we're going to raise these pulleys up level them out get them off of that clamp and by tightening them down tighter than what they came from the factory that will help remove a lot of that noise the drill press comes with a three millimeter allen key the problem with it is that it's so short the only way you can turn it to get much torque on it it makes it a little difficult to get to the set screws on the pulleys so i'm using a t-handled three millimeter allen wrench to do the pulley adjustments if you don't have one you can use what comes with it it'll just be a little more difficult to work with i'm also using pennies as spacers i'm going to use three pennies to set the height on the pulley on the spindle for the drill chuck the reason i pick pennies is because pretty much everybody has them if you'll set them to this height it'll get you off of that clamp that's assuming that there's some consistency in the way these are manufactured so you might have to adjust it a little differently but what you don't want to do is get the pulley so high that it starts rubbing on the belt cover Once you get the spindle side pulley adjusted, you'll want to adjust the motor side pulley up and level it out. Although I'm using it level here, I'm really just using it more as a straight edge. You just want the tops of the pulleys flat with each other. So once that all is aligned, you can tighten the motor pulley back down. And if you'll torque the set screws onto the flats of the shafts where they're supposed to be and torque them down with some force, not too much. You don't want to strip the aluminum pulley out but you do want to get it tight enough that they're not going to vibrate and rattle around on the pulleys and that's what they were doing from the factory and that's why you could hear kind of a ringing sound and some clicking and clacking a lot of that was because the pulleys weren't tight enough here i'm just using a large flat bladed screwdriver to put some tension on this belt and i'm just using this kind of like a pry bar prying the motor away from the body and then i will tighten down the thumb screw you don't want to use a tool on this you want to do it hand tight only that way you don't strip out that thumb screw on it Here you can see how loose the adjustment is for the spindle shaft. The spindle shaft nut and adjustment screw was so loose that it was rattling around in its housing also. So I'm just going to adjust this screw in to the point where the handles will not retract using the spring that's attached to the handle. Once you get to that point, that's too tight. So you just want to start backing it off until you get smooth movement of the spindle up and down with the handle and it returns to its original position with the spring. You don't want it to bind in any way, but you also don't want it so loose that the spindle can flop around in there in the housing. And that will take care of most of the noises that you're hearing from these the way they come from the factory. on these are some sort of metal i'm not sure what it is it could be some sort of a zinc alloy it could also be aluminum i suppose my best guess is that it's a die cast zinc alloy of some sort which is not all that great for rigidity purposes or longevity but again these are very inexpensive drill presses so it is what it is here's a quick tip for you there's no type of chuck key holder or anything on this drill press you can stick a pretty strong magnet to the side of the belt housing the belt housing is steel so the magnet will stick just fine and then you can stick your chuck key on that and that will hold your chuck key for you Thank you. 